Hi all, our instructive game today will have the theme of Overloaded Knights. To demonstrate this theme I'm going to choose the game Kramnik vs Nigel Short, Vladimir Kramnik against Nigel Short, played yesterday in the Chess Olympiad which I've been following. By the way, if you'd like to come and watch these games with me live, just come to the Let's Play Chess Com site, a register, and there's if you choose a game there's a link on the right of your playing board for the Olympiad and I'll be chatting on the forum for some of these games. So. Unfortunately, England, they only had two draws and two losses, and this is one of the losses. Kramnik kicked off with d4, and Short chose the Shikorin um, defence. So, one of the problems of the Shikorin, although it's innovative and it can get white out of, out of main opening theory, it does block the c pawn. And as we'll see later, if white's able to play c4 and cd, white can gain a lot of strong c file pressure. And Kramnik just played very simply along these lines to be able to play c4 here and now just deploying his pieces naturally. So he took on d5 though and after bishop f4 you know he has a solid position which with potential later of clamping down on the c5 square. Nigel Short played bishop d6 and after bishop g3 now knight g e7. So it does seem to be an interesting position, an unusual position but um, Kramnik just plays very solidly, just e3 here, after queen d7, he now plays a3, so seemingly humble move, but it's going to reinforce that control of the c5 square, with b4 coming up later. So after castles, bishop d3, and now Nigel Short played a6. He has his own positional ideas in mind, if white does play b4, white will be weakening the c4 square, and if black can reroute a knight like this after b5 has been played, then Black would be, you know, okay. But Kramnik doesn't really allow this plan from Black. He takes on d6, and Nigel Short takes on f3, so we have quite a significant exchanges there. And after queen g3, Kramnik is, you know, wanting to take the queens off as well, just to emphasize he's got a slight nagging pressure on the c file. Nigel Short plays rook fd8, and after b4, we see now the move g6. So, potentially, Nigel Short's going to use the f5 square and also give his king um, the ability to play king g7 and rook h8 if white is planning like h4. So, maybe it's a prophylactic type of move. But um, after knight a4, white's positional threat of knight c5 is coming in here, and we see a whole problem now with, with the Shigori, you know, that black c pawn. Um, you know, black can't easily parry against this pressure. Nigel Short, he, he plays knight c8. And after rook c1, there's a very awkward move, which um, I, I was a bit uh, concerned to see uh, during, the, during the live relay, rook a7. So white's definitely got more natural looking pieces, but um, how does Kramnik you know, turn this into a win? Well, after castles b5, instead of the routine knight c5, which would allow knight b6 and knight c4, actually Kramnik does something very clever here, he basically aims to sacrifice two of his minor pieces um, for, for, t for a rook, but he exchanged queens first, and after rook takes d6, because the knight wants to reroute like this, um, and also the knight has to be protected by the rook, Kramnik, he doesn't play knight c5, he actually plays knight c3, and he's got an immediate threat of taking on b5 um, to be able to recapture with the knight and fork these two rooks. Now, normally, this wouldn't be so bad for black, but in this position, um, there's a lot of pressure that, that is exerted in this game. The knights become overloaded, as we'll see. So after knight 6, e7, we see now this powerful you know, sacrifice. Um, so after a, b, knight takes b5, Nigel Short plays rook d, a6. And you know he's really having to defend this position uh, very accurately. After knight takes, rook takes, now rook c5. So if rook takes a3 here, I don't believe that's any good because of rook takes c7. And white has a very dangerous position with that rook on the 7th and the ability to play rook b1, b4, b5. So Nigel Short, he avoided losing his c pawn. He played knight b6. And after rook a1, king f8, a4. I thought, you know, maybe Nigel Short would hold this. But um, the pressure is increasing now with these pawn advances. And now after this rook a2, it stops any knight d2s with knight b3 idea, forking the rooks. 
So Black's under severe pressure, but it has given Nigel Short apparently, you know, some time to play f5 to stop any e4. Um, but f5 itself is exploited soon, as we'll see. So we see some centralization now of the kings. And now b5, so the pawns are getting even more dangerous. But after knight c4, you know, is Nigel Short committing this pawn to be, you know, moved further up? Well, actually, no, because white actually play rook a4 here. And if the rook takes, then rook takes c4, just winning a piece. And if the knight takes, well, let's have a look, knight takes here, then rook c2. And this is such an awkward pin, uh, because of if the knight can't retreat back here because of the check, and rook c a2 is threatened. So the knights are really overloaded here. They can't really take on a5. So this is becoming really critical now. Nigel Short just played king d8, and after a6, it seems, you know, is he giving Short a chance with this blockading square, b6? Is it good enough? But actually, no, because now after rook a1, the rook's also threatening to come on the king side. If white ever plays g4, be blasting open a line on the king side, as we'll see. So h3 prepares g4, and Nigel Short tried to clamp it down, but it was played anyway as a temporary pawn sack. And now rook g1. So black's really overloaded here, unfortunately. And now the rook comes on, on the king's side. So rook h4 here, even sacrificing the exchange. So just leaving black a piece up, but a hopeless piece up, because this rook is so devastating. What Nigel Short did is, is try and free his position now with c6. But off the check, king c7, rook c2, there's really, it's a really difficult position for black. Ribker actually gives this as, as losing for black by about two units. After knight b6, rook h7, the knights are clearly overloaded. This this whole plan by Kramnik of sacrificing the two pieces for the rooks really worked out well here. And after bc, there's horrible threats now, like of c7. So if takes, takes, king takes, rook takes c7. So desperate blockade. Now king f3, and the king itself is, is threatening to do horrible marching maneuvers, like king f4, e5 to d6. After king a7, now rook a2, offering the pawn which can't be taken either way. So black's just sitting there, just waiting now. After knight bc8, rook b2 actually threatens rook b7 check. And in this position, if knight b6, then the king can still keep marching. So say knight b6, king f4, and you know this marching maneuver is really critical for the black position. Actually, in this position, Nigel Short capitulated in effect. He played king takes a6, just allowing rook h1. And this is now mating the black king. Um, basically, what else is there? It's a very difficult position. If, let's say, knight d6 to try and stop rook b7, then rook b7 anyway. And this is absolutely critical, because black's totally overloaded here. If rook takes c6, rook e7, if black doesn't do anything, then rook h8, so say g5, king g4. And now, black, it just leaves black overloaded, so he can't move either rook or knight. Just, just to take this pawn, maybe move the f pawn up. So here, black's like frozen, can't do anything. So basically, this is a very critical position, and... Um, very unpleasant. Um, so if knight takes c6, rook takes c7. If king b6, then b8 queening. If king b8, then rook h8, and then then queening. So it's actually just kind of lost here. So Nigel Short, in effect, he capitulated with just taking the pawn on a6, and after rook h1, you know, he resigned. Let's have a quick look in overview and summary at this game. So, Shigurin, and Kramnik played very simply just to exploit that semi-open c-file pressure and highlighting that weakness of the c5 square. So he had here the potential of these knight outposts on either c5 for white or c4 for black. And Kramnik was very cheeky in switching his plan. After the exchange of queens, he actually played knight c3 instead of knight c5. He didn't want to allow knight b6 to c4. Instead, he had this idea of sacrificing two pieces for a rook, and as a result, he really managed to increase the pressure dramatically using his rooks and these pawns, and also opening a second front on the king's side using f5 to be able to peel open 
the G file for the the rook to come on the G file, and Nigel Short's position was basically under tremendous pressure. He tried to liberate it with C6, but it really didn't help. So here he just stood helplessly as White was winning even more pawns, and these knights just became more and more hopeless. So after Rook B2, there was a horrible threat of Rook B7. And Nigel Short just played King A6, allowing Rook H1, which is mating the Black King. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, unfortunate for England, but um, I'll post some England wins uh, soon. Um, we lost the match 3-1 yesterday, so we, at least we had two draws, though. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.